Well, well, well. Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. It's a nice, beautiful morning over here in Helsinki, Finland on this beautiful Tuesday. Want to be wishing you well, as always. Want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest, and perhaps even a little bit of a warmer, <laughs> a little bit of a warmer morning than we're having over here. But we got plenty of magic and money bits to get deep and down and dirty into right here, right now. So wasting no more time. Let's get into the live scene. And there we go. Teleportation. Initiate. And here it is. Still, the range is set for the intermediate term, the blue 377 governing. And uh, I do want to see this 200 exponential, this purple 200 exponential kind of governing the more intermediate support but of course because this is a higher time frame we're looking at it daily right now the i just want to show that this range is still very much set 53 or what do we want to call this uh, 52 50 5300 basically right around the 377 exponential right over here our resistance our governing factor and then about 4800 our preliminary support Overall, all of the action has been going down on lower time frames and actually on all the altcoins recently. Um, but with Bitcoin, we can certainly do some more analysis. However, I would like to spend just a little bit more time here on the daily. We do have daily stokes back and up and Adam. In fact, this is a clear, this is a clear respectful, respectation, respectfulness of this, uh, you know, uh, you know, of the more critical zone, which to me is uh, is actually typically. You know, it, it, it does offer up the chance for it to fall over a lot easier, but usually when that area gets defended, it wants to give another try. And that's, I believe, what we're going to see right here right now is Bitcoin's crawling its way up on the lower time frames, which I believe are where all the action is going down. Uh, not, well, perhaps not down, but right now a little bit up. Actually, this wick getting bought up. As you can see, the yellow 21 exponential governing this formation right here. And of course, our, we could just kind of imagine the 377 coming in right over here on the daily, right around a little bit below 5300, essentially. So whichever way Bitcoin breaks, that's going to be the next the next kind of a short term direction, if you want to call it that, governed by the four hour total time frame. Four hour would be would be signaling a little bit more heaviness here. I do see four hour stokes down. I do see that we are creating some di some pretty nasty divergences now on the four hour. Uh, is that you know is that respected on the higher time frames? I would say yeah. Uh, close, but no cigar on the 12 hour. Uh, Got to go back down to the four hour. So four hour, yes, it does you know it does have that bearish divergence going on. However, did it already play out? We got the move down to the 21 exponential. We've been basing off of it quite a few times. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's usually kind of wearing out your welcome with with uh, with four-hour stokes down as well. I would say that this probably does want to come back down and fill the gap a little bit lower, uh, according to the CMEs, which I believe is still right around 50-50-ish area. Yeah, right around here, right around uh, yeah, about 50-50. We could call. Let's see if that matches up with anything on uh, on Bitcoin spot over here. And uh, yes, if we do put on the drawing tools, you will notice that we do have a nice horizontal coming in right here right around this 50 50 ish area so if we do break if we can actually formally break this this uptrend uh this, this uh this uptrend trend line at uh what do we want to call it about 51 let's just call it 5200 make it easy then I would be looking for the next move to bring this to, uh, to bring this baby down back around that 50-50-ish area, and it does look like the lower time frames do want to head still down around there. Of course, this is you know all taking a long time. We do these videos every day, so it's always very important to 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 to, to clearly and, de de and deliberately separate all the time frames that we talk about because you know something that's you know on a daily little time frame that's not gonna you know it's not gonna happen for you know a week maybe two weeks uh, when we talk about a weekly time frame it might be months <laughs> when we talk about a four hour time frame it might be like a day. So that's you know it's it's a little bit more appropriate. Overall, this week I am looking for a pullback in Bitcoin um, as far as the higher time frames go, going back on over here to the daily, uh, kind of fill out the range just a little bit more. But I don't believe that we're going to see a major break, uh, break out or break down from, you know, from this area. I think that we're probably going to come back down, test some supports and then try again higher. And then perhaps, you know, later this week or maybe early next week, we'll, we'll actually we'll actually try for a new high above this 377 exponential, which has very obviously been holding price action back. Sorry, let me make sure that it's in visual view. There we go. It's this blue moving average right over here. If that area gets broken, more importantly, from the medium time frame perspective, then I would be looking for a move up until here about 5550 to 5600 um, of course that is our next sort of blocky territory if you put on the volume profile you also notice some activity being done in this area albeit very very low in general I mean to put this in perspective if I, if I drag this out a little bit more it's gonna make more sense um, and there we go you can see right now, as far as the volume profile goes, we are out in no man's land, which really offer, which really lets price action kind of float around and figure out where the liquidity, where the liquidity does lie. Um, sorry, do, it is not not where it lies, but where it is. And uh, you can see that you know when we were stuck in a higher value node like this, Bitcoin was having a very small range intraday. You know, it's it quite boring. We don't really get all that many moves. Now, when we're kind of in this in this very low market acceptance area. 
it does offer up the chance for Bitcoin to just zoom zoom around and create these kind of larger, nastier ranges, which it, which is what I wanted to show because again, on the daily total time frame, you know, the range is quite large. It's about forty eight hundred to fifty. What do we want to call this? Fifty two? No, fifty three. Fifty three to get it to get it exactly right. A five hundred dollar range, which is you know about a ten percent move now for Bitcoin, quite large. But that's why because we're kind of going back in and filling in the blanks and figuring out where that liquidity you know really is. So of course, going back down to the lower time frames, I do want to check on a few more other things. Uh, we did have a four-hour sell on the jewel, but that was way over here. Did that already play out? I mean, that was a nice move from 53.20 down to 51.30. Yeah, $200 move. Yeah, I'd probably say that's already played out. I'm not really, you know, I'm not, I'm not in any sort of uh, any sort of a rush to get into any positions either which way right now. Uh, I do still have my long on from my derivative position. Let me just make sure that it's still onwards and over here. Oh man, I just missed my uh, my signal. Let me uh, let me actually just scroll on over to my other to my other chart uh one second <laughs> as i am over here wow man that was a that was a quick move right there not bad not bad at all let's try some of that there we go um, but yeah, as far as uh, as far as my derivative is going right now, still just holding on to this position. I don't see any real reason to let go of it. Uh, the only re the only way that I really let go of it right now is if uh, is if actually we dropped back down below the 200 exponential, this purple moving average right over here on the daily. For right now, Bitcoin's well above it and uh, and, and and enjoying some nice uh, some nice airtime. Let me just make sure that I actually get the rest of this right. Come on, baby, come back to daddy. There you go. That's a good that's a good four X for you <laughs> what <laughs> that doesn't even make sense but <laughs> half the strategy is to sweet talk the price action there you go uh, anyways, yeah, we should come back down around there. Okay, yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, cool. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now as far as immediate, you know, inter inter interrelating the lower time frames with, with the medium time frames. Um, looking at the weekly, I think it becomes a little bit more visually apparent that, you know, we could very easily have a pullback uh, into the higher 4000s. It wouldn't really set any anything off too crazily. It would also make sense as we've kind of hit all these major exponential movement averages kind of looming overhead, of course, to reiterate this. Uh, we got the daily 377 exponential right over here. We got the two day 200 exponential moving average right over here we got the three day 200 200 exponential moving average right over here as well we got the weekly 50 and 89 exponential coming in right around here and of course the monthly the the, the granddaddy of them all coming in right around uh, 5200 as well on the 21 and the 10 simple moving average so all of these more importantly on the higher time frames are crossing right here we have a, we have lower periods crossing the crossing the downside of the higher period let me just make sure that I actually close this come on baby we're almost there you're almost home you're almost home get in your house let's see uh, 86. Okay, I think that we can do that. Some like this, and oh, you, oh, you bastard, you silly, you silly goose. One second, as I make sure that uh, this is all well in Safu. Do you want to make sure? Do I want to show this? Well, can I can I suppose. Let me see that. Uh, let me see that I actually got it. Nope, it's not over there. Oh yes, it is. There we go. Oh, you can't really see my position though. I'm just trying to close it right now. Just basically looking for a little bit of a scalpy scalp. Uh, we'll go back to the live scene though, as a little bit boring. And I think I am just about. Come on, come on, baby, come down and film me. You know you want to. I think I'm just going to manually close it. There we go. All right, good enough. Anyways, cool. All right, so back now on into, and that's that's going to be my my uh, my my streamer account for Forex, by the way. I took all the money out of my Derivit account, and then I put it on, well, not all of the money, but most of it, uh, like about half of it, <clears throat> on and put it onto my Evolve Markets uh, account. Uh, of course, I actually just made a video on that. So if you're not familiar with with MT5 and you have no idea what, what we were just looking at, well, go check out that video I uploaded a few days ago. Um, so there you go. Okay. Anyways, uh, with Bitcoin right over here, you know, all these all these moving averages looming overhead are you know are certainly worth concern because very 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 likely on first pass bitcoin does back off from them doesn't mean that it can't break it you know on a second or third pass but just talking probabilities talking statistics very 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 likely to pull from first pass and here's the thing is that we're talking about higher time frames now we're talking about weekly we're talking about monthly which these t this these are operating on well quite literally those time frames so it's going to take time to actually play out so it's just something that i want to be cognizant of as bitcoin approaches these areas for the first time after five months from you know living away from it holy moly man could have held on to that for a little bit longer would have been would have been a nicer trade Oh, well, whatever. Um, anyway, so, you know, that's why on the lower time frames, I want to kind of interrelate these ideas saying that, hey, Bitcoin could very easily pull back here, uh, fulfilling, you know, kind of, you know, the first pass being uh, being pushed off and then reaccumulate a little bit lower and then try higher. 
Does that mean that I believe that the overall lows for Bitcoin are in? Nope, I don't believe, or sorry, I shouldn't say that. I don't, it's, I, I'm not going to be saying that anymore. I don't believe that the overall lows for Bitcoin are in. No, I take, I, I, I do take that statement off the table, but I don't, I certainly do not um, discount the fact that Bitcoin can't return to the prior lows or around the prior lows. That's more appropriate to say right now as a trader, as an analyst, you know, I'm kind of like 50, 50 on the, you know, on, on, on whether the lows in or not. But even, even with that said, I'm, there's no real rush, even for someone like me, who for the most part, I'm a short term dot. Uh, short-term day trader, but most of my money is out of this market right now. I will bring back the rest of my money into this market when I believe that Bitcoin's, you know, actually bottomed. When I see clear and obvious evidence, um, that would be a monthly closing above the 21 exponential moving average right over here. That would that would entice me to do something. That would entice me to take action. Or if we played out something more further to the downside, uh, one of those two things would would be good enough for me. Doesn't mean you know, of course, it doesn't mean that uh, you know it's it's a done deal. And holy moly, who is this? I am young. Good to meet you, man. I'm not young. I'm, I'm getting old as fuck, man. I've, I have gray hairs all over my face. It's disgusting. Uh, it's, it, re it really is. Um, and then I, have, uh, then I have nose hairs now too, man. It's absolutely gross. But, uh, but yeah, more importantly, you know, that's kind of that's kind of the way forwards that I see right now. Going over here to the eight hour, you can see Bitcoin just being walked up by the 10 cent moving average. We do see eight hour stokes going upwards and onwards. We watched this yesterday. While things have been quite slinky, uh, this one actually has been relatively, relatively dependable. Now, here's the thing, though. Eight hour jewel will likely be lining up for a well. No, it's it's uh, I, I, I would not say that it's really when we go over to the alts when things start to look a little bit more clear with with playing out some downside here. But we do have some bearish divergence here as my nose gets the itch to sneeze. A little bit of bearish divergence on the eight hour, not a little bit, but actually quite a lot. Um, on top of that, eight, uh, eight hour jewel kind of setting up for sell. Not really though, I, I wouldn't really consider that. 10 hours, 10 hours, same sort of thing. Uh, Bitcoin slowly but surely chugging its way along, but creating divergence along the way does make things a little bit more difficult. Uh, 10 hour jewel does look a little bit more concise and, uh, and and right if it is going to line up, but it would also imply that we do have another, uh, you know, another stab up before that actually plays out. Uh, tw 10 hour jewel, or sorry, 10 hour stokes also up as well. So we do have our kind of medium time frame suggesting a little bit of up right now. Um, sorry, our, our medium to low time frame. So just seeing a little bit of up. So that would offer up the the avenue for for again another you know another test higher. But ultimately, I am looking for Bitcoin to consolidate lower uh, in this whole phase, if that makes sense. So let's actually go on to the back onto the weekly. Which I think is very important right here. We have the 50 exponential cross on the downside of the Cyan 89 exponential right over here, which is very important because that's telling us about the overall trend. And the overall trend is, you know, shifting down. I mean, this, you know, we got these cross. I'm sorry, we got this cross about two months ago in February or late February. So maybe, maybe a little more than a month ago. It's more appropriate to say. More importantly, though, uh, when I look at something like this, the thing is to keep in mind is that uh, is that we can pop all the way back down, you know, into the mid, you know, in, in, into the mid to high 4000s. That's very likely to be bought on up, as you can see. And what's kind of telling me this right now is that the yellow 21 exponential is very aggressively coming up right now. It's very aggressively sloped up, which does say it, it, which is very, very important to me because we will actually have a chance to both open and close our first weekly total above the above not only the yellow 21 exponential, but also the, actually the purple, the, pur the purple 200 exponential moving average right over here, both incredibly powerful, at least for me um, as to judging the higher trend uh, as as governed by a weekly so here's the thing we have not been able to we, we've not been able to open and close a weekly total above the above the yellow 21 exponential since you know the bull run ending in uh, 2017 early 2018 uh, we haven't been able to open and close a weekly total above the purple 200 exponential in literally five months five six months right over here in fact just closing above on the first try was pretty impressive on this sort of volume that's what does make me think that this run overall does probably try higher but keep in mind jesus christ man there you go oh man could have been rich, could have been rich. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so as these do get aggressively kind of sloped to the upside, that does tell me that, you know, likely the next the, the next dip down is probably going to be bought. And uh, and we do try higher from there as far as the weeklies go. So this is talking, you know, a little bit more like maybe like a month out, something like that. Um, and overall, when we do look at also the Trollinger bands, not my favorite way of doing it, but uh, but we did close our first our first girthy green dildo above the top Trollinger band, something that we haven't done since uh, since late 2017, right over 
here. You get these when things trend pretty damn strongly. And when you do close above the top or lower band, I want to see us actually come back, retest that, retest that band, and then rally off there. It's, it's very likely to get bought back up at the very least for a bounce. Doesn't mean it needs to get continuation, but at the very least for a bounce. And that's coming in currently speaking at around that 4,900 level that we spoke about. So anywhere between 48 and 49 is where I'd kind of feel pretty damn comfortable with, with state and some like that would, uh, you know, it's likely to happen. Um, of course, you know, also of importance on the weekly uh, Trollingers, we got our first open and close above this, uh, above the medium band right over here a couple weeks ago. That was kind of the impetus for me to holding on to my long a little bit longer, um, uh, you know, amongst other things. But that's also something that we just haven't done since, you know, late 2017, early 2018. So you do see things really change around from this sort of picture. No doubt about that. I would 100%, uh, uh, you know, agree with that. Um, but of course, it's the higher picture that governs the macro, which governs, you know, your actual bull and bear mark cycles. And that I would still be unconvinced on. And as a trader, I need to be very, 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 very clear about this. It's really important in these areas to be agnostic because these are the areas where people get extremely exuberant and irrational. And that is what creates that good old drug of FOMO, which is exactly where the market wants you to be when it does put in these areas. So that's why I'm kind of sitting back. Personally speaking, what I think is maybe like what I think is probably most likely to happen is we do get that pullback. The pullback gets bought. We get another leg probably from 55. 56 something like that and then that puts in a top but also keep in mind that from this perspective you know, going down on over here into into the daily we got to also keep in mind the underlying market fundamentals which motherfucker you motherfucker my trading view has been such a pain in the asshole recently uh, i really apologize about this i'm i'm trying to uh okay there we go it, it got brought up um for whatever reason it whenever i have two windows open on the same computer it just does not like that uh but here's the daily mbt signal we've been following this for a while we are getting divergence from the mbt signal not only that but we are signaling red which has signaled all of the major tops in bitcoin's history doesn't that does not mean that Bitcoin needs to make a new low from here, but it does mean caution from a historical standpoint that um, that major highs have been put in around this area. So keep that in mind. And Jesus Christ, man. Wow. I really, really could have made oh, Jesus Christ, man. I really could have hold, held on to that for a little bit of time. Oh, well. Oh, well. Again, you know, when I'm streaming, I don't like holding on to trades for too long. And I'm just kind of testing out this, uh, th this, this new streamer account for my Forexes. So I loaded up with four Bitcoins. I'm at four, 439 right now. Um... And so I'll hope, hopefully I'll start to hopefully I'll start to build that up. I'll start taking videos of that as well. I do want to make sure that I speak with um, with a loyal uh, with, sorry with a lawyer first, just to make sure that I, everything's kosher. Like I'm not breaking any laws and, uh, and not going to piss anyone off and get the fucking I don't know government services knocking on my doors. But uh, but I think everything should be fine. So that that shouldn't be a concern. Anyways, um, on the MVT signal, yes, we are signaling red. But here's the thing: it can stay red for a long time. Um, in fact, in the history, it usually stays at least for a few weeks. Um, on average about a month and at, at most about a, about five to six months right over here. So keep that in mind. It just is one of those warning posts in the back of my mind saying, hey, you're approaching all these major exponential movement averages. You're approaching major, major resistance areas. You're, appro you're approaching major overhead liquidities. You're approaching things that are very important right now. Not only that, but we are starting to put in some bearish divergence on the daily. Ooh, actually, uh, do I want to call top right here? I might be calling top right here, actually. Uh, I really don't like it when you print bearish divergence on a daily. Um, you know, could we get another leg up on top of that though? Mm, perhaps, perhaps. But I'd say now that we're showing some, now that we're actually showing some bearish divergence on a daily, uh, things do take on a little bit more of a, a uh, little bit more of a, an intense tone. Um, not like Mr. Vays, but you know, just putting all the puzzle pieces together from the macro perspective. That's what I wanted to show. Hey. Not necessarily, not necessarily appropriate as a trader or as an analyst to be calling anything crazy just yet. But what I am saying is that, hey, um, you know, it, you know, it, it certainly is worth concern uh, if you are, you know, if you are in a longer term time frame. Of course, I know a lot of people are looking at the lower time frames, and that's why we also talk about this over right over here, which does look like we're probably going to get another try. Uh, but ultimately, I would like to see consolidation lower. Uh, let's see. Okay, so really, so realistically, where I'm kind of going off of right now is actually a lot of the altcoins because when we go over here to the other leaders like B, uh, BMB, right? BMB, which we've been following for the last, well, we've been following this for, for, for eternity, but more importantly, uh, for the last week or so, we've been kind of suggesting that that there was going to be a sell signal lineup on the daily jewel, which we did get perfectly, I believe, over the weekend on the 5th of April. Sorry, not over the weekend, but right over here on this high at $19, 19 about $19.5 right over there. Now, that was, that was as perfect as the signal does get, and this one falling over right now, which does 
does tell me that if this one led the mark to the upside, it's probably going to, you know, it's it's it's, it's probably gonna probably gonna take things to the downside as well. Um, we can also look at Mrs. Litecoin, but first things first, uh, daily Stokes on this guy or girl or whatever gender you want to have for BNB. I don't know what CZ is, but. Uh, now, motherfucker! Oh man, there we go. Okay, there it is. Jesus, uh, we do have this trend line being met right here. So keep this in mind on the Stokes. This trend line has been valid since um, January. Yeah, January, tw j uh, middle of January of this year, and uh, and not been broken. So. While technically speaking, this is creating a sending triangle. I don't look at it as such. What I look at it as is. Um, is 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 essentially just being walked up and the second that we actually break this trend line we're probably going to come back down to the neutral zone which would likely bring bnb down around this 15 a little bit above maybe 15 and a quarter 15 and a half dollars right over here so uh while typically speaking i do want to see a bounce off this yellow 21 exponential on first pass we probably do get that bounce um but uh but the next rally probably going to get sold into as we do see the jewel kind of take over again a move from 19 and a half dollars down to uh, 17 and a half dollars not bad uh, but i do think that it probably does have a little bit more after us after like a short-term bounce um, which is kind of what I'm feeling with Bitcoin right now as well so you know keep these things in mind just because this one had had led the market to the upside so I would imagine that uh, if it does start to turn down that's not necessarily the best sign for Bitcoin either um, let's see uh, do we have something going on like this not really actually kind of destroying lines right there got to be honest with yourself when you're not necessarily doing technical analysis but just doing silly drawings um let's go over here to mrs litecoin uh, mrs litecoin 87 and a half dollars uh broke her triangle to the downside more importantly we have the same sort of signature on the daily uh, we got a daily jewel sell signal um or or perhaps are we getting it right now yeah i believe that we're getting it right now uh, I, I think that we officially got it right over here. Yep. And, uh, and ever since then, it's kind of been down. But I do believe that we're probably going to bounce off this area. As we spoke about last night, we got down to that low 80-ish number. Um, what is it? 84 and a half? Or, sorry, let's let's go over here to uh, to GDAX. Yeah, 80, yeah, about 83 and a half. Yeah, not bad. Close enough is close enough. Probably do bounce from this area. But ultimately, I would be looking for this. Or, or ideally, I want to see this come back down and test, uh, test like 70. Mm. You know, I do want to see this trend line tested right here. 79 and a half dollars. Um, but it's probably going to take some time. Realistically, what's likely to happen is this 21 exponential is going to crawl its way up. We're going to put in a little bit of time going sideways here and then come down officially and test it. And that would probably be the pullback that I'm looking for on, on something like Mrs. Litecoin. Looking at the weekly, I think it becomes abundantly clear that, hey, uh, the pullback here is, is, is to be bought, uh, but it's very likely that this pullback, you know, still hasn't still hasn't fully commenced. We do see weekly stokes getting way up there, getting a little bit tired. We do see daily stokes um, technically down, but very weak right now. This looking a little bit more toppy. We do not see the same bearish divergence that we see on Mr. Bitcoin, actually, by the way, which is very important. In fact, we see higher highs along with, uh, uh, sorry, we see higher highs on price action along with higher highs on RSI. That's not bad, uh, but it does look, you know, it does look like it's kind of getting ready for a pullback to me. Let's go over here to the two-day. Uh, two-day, yeah, two-day support right around $75.50, and that's exactly where I'd be looking towards from like a more uh, higher time frame perspective, the more intermediate time frame, I suppose you could say. Three day kind of been no man's land. We do see three day stokes down as well. Uh, three day stokes have been in pretty damn good market for Mrs. Litecoin. So overall, <clears throat> you know, uh, overall, I would be looking for a pullback regardless. Um, let's see. I do. It, it looks like we do have some sort of a formation going on. You know, on our three day stokes. If you wanted to call this a rising channel, you probably could. Could probably fit one in there. Not not too important to do out right now. Again, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. Sorry, sorry, cat lady. I apologize about that. Don't mean don't mean it like that. But uh, going but going back on over here to Mr. Bitcoin. More importantly speaking, uh, the three day has retested our 200 exponential which is very important because right now we right now you can see that there's a very obvious consolidation going on between the 89 and the 200 and that is kind of rounding out our our range so to speak for now which also agrees with all the other things that we've seen essentially is what it comes down to sorry and i said something earlier that i think i didn't do a good job of, of explaining um, but I said that there was overhead liquidity for Bitcoin. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, again, putting back on the volume profile, you do see that there is that there is pockets of high, you know, of, of higher liquidity in these areas. And typically speaking, assets do want to float towards areas of high liquidity, um, just just as, as as a general rule. So overall, that's kind of why I would be saying, or, or sorry, that's 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 why I would say that it is likely over time that Bitcoin probably gives a try higher. Um, 
but I would be looking for that try to probably be sold most likely. So, <clears throat> you know, all these things, I, I know I'm kind of talking around uh, around a bunch of different time frames, but again, to just kind of reiterate what I'm going on from low to high time frame, lower time frame, uh, still, you know, probably going to grind this area, but ultimately want to see a pullback to around 49. Uh, first things first, um, in the very low time frames, if we're looking at it like this, uh, if if we can actually officially break 5200 with like a two hour delta closing below there, I'd be looking for a move towards 5050. Fill the gap probably does bounce there, probably bounces back up to 5150, something like that. And then I'd look for the full retrace for that actual move down, uh, hopefully to around uh, 48 4900, um, which uh, which would kind of fulfill all those areas that we've been looking at. Uh, in the in the medium term time frames, it's not until we break out above 53. <clears throat> or below 48, where things start to change around. If we break 48, I'd be looking for 46. If we break 53 to the upside, I look for 55, 50 to 5600. Um, what else do we have after that? And then on top of that, the macro time frames still a shit ton of resistances looming overhead, which does make me very apprehensive. We do see the MBT signal kind of signaling, well, <laughs> danger, danger, if you want to call it like that. If I bring up the crypto fear and greed index, which uh, which I've been lazy with bringing up uh, recently, as I don't, you know, I think that it kind of holds less weight. Um, uh, uh, as, as we kind of seen, uh, but it technically is greedy right now, which has been good markers for the past, except in the more recent past, which has kind of broken that trend. So more importantly, I believe that that trend has been broken. It's no longer to be followed, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it begins a new trend. So all these things need to be taken into consideration with each other. Going back on over here to spot charts, you can see that this wick on the four hours being bought up extremely well, uh, 48 minutes left to go on this four hour total time frame. So I do believe that we're going to going to see the, see it grind this, this high out one more time. And then we're going to see if, you know, if the moves, if the move's real enough, if it wants to give it a legitimate attempt, if it wants to give it a legitimate attempt and break this area, then, hey, I start looking towards that 55, 50 to, uh, to 5,600 number. Um, but for now, I would say that there is, you know, I'd, I'd, still, I'd still be very skeptical of this uh, of this buyback. Uh, to me, it kind of feels like it's setting up for a move, eh, probably test a little bit lower. Um, anyways, okay, cool. So, 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 we spoke all about that. We spoke about Mrs. Like, Mrs. like when you spoke about BNB. Let's go check out uh, Mr. Buterall right over here, Mr. Buterall. Still shuffling his way around. Uh, certainly the laggard of the top three, which I, which is what I've been saying for a long time. Um, resistance right around 183. Support right here, as we're kind of bouncing off of right now. Uh, spoken on last night, 174.5. Now, here's the thing. If we do break 174.5, I would be looking for the full move down to about 167 uh, in this territory right over here. Probably going to come in conflict with Bitcoin break, breaking actually 52. Um, by the same token, if we do break this area, 183.5 to the upside. or Sorry, 183 to the upside, not 183.5, but 183 to the upside, I would be looking for the next target i mean technically speaking you know technically speaking it'd be 190 but uh but personally i would be looking at around the 200 levels if bitcoin does break 5300 we probably will see mr buter around the 200s uh, or a little bit above um, but for right now you know it's 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 likely to do whatever bitcoin and and, uh, and mrs litecoin do uh four hour stokes technically down i think daily are also nope uh, daily are up right now yeah daily are looking okay in fact the 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 thing is is that daily has rallied perfectly off of the retest of this horizontal right here i mean <clears throat> if it is going to give it a try it does, you know it does happen today uh, but looking at all of our oscillators, I would be skeptical of this. Uh, four, hour, four hour RSI, which say is just neutral. Um, the rest are a little bit leaning to the downside uh, as far as indicators go. Let's go over here to the eight hour. Yeah, eight hour is looking a little bit toppy. It's got some major bearish divergence between this point and this point. Uh, so there we go. Uh, what about 12 hour? Same thing. Uh, daily, do we have anything to be aware of here? Mm, not really. Daily, daily actually looks okay. Da daily is a little bit more neutral to slightly bullish. Um, I'd say than the other time frames, but uh, but yeah, going back on over to the weekly, you know, here's the thing for Mr. Buterall, uh, the weekly support is right around 162 on Finex, and that's you know anywhere around that range is where you know if if I was looking to be a buyer, that's kind of where I'd be looking towards. Of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, um, but uh, but but certainly is worth mentioning. Uh, strong weekly support right over here, right around that 162-ish level, low low 160s essentially. So would I still be holding out for a test down there? Uh, I think it's probably worth it. Um, as extremely strong chance for a bounce. Uh, and do we get some continuation on top of that? Perhaps, uh, very possible, perhaps. But gonna depend on whatever, you know, the top, the other top majors do. This one, again, has just not been leading. Um, okay, cool, I'm actually recording. My voice is working, nice, good, great. Uh, what else do we wanna look at? Um, 
Let's look at the other top shit coins, I suppose. We got uh, Cardano over here. We got 1650. We caught a top in that rally the other day, and I believe that we're just seeing that play out right now. We got a sell signal on the jewel right over here and down. Um, we did get the we did get the move down to 1600 that I was looking for. So I would be looking for a bounce in this range, uh, most likely off, off this horizontal. Felt this range a little bit more, and then perhaps get a little bit more of a deeper retracement into the 1500 level. Um, as far as the weekly goes, the weekly support is is significantly further down actually it's, it's actually all the way at about 1400 do i think that we come all the way down to 1400 to test that mm, probably unlikely from 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 this area right here right now it doesn't mean that it can't happen over time but uh but right now <clears throat> yeah I, I we're more likely to bounce this area right now and then later on we probably come back down and, and fulfill that area uh but i don't think that we get down to 1400 if we get back down to 1400 it probably does probably breaks and this thing goes back you know back to lows but uh but I, I think that this thing would you know support is is right around 1450 to 1500 that's that's the real area to be aware of uh, where i'd be looking for the real bounce from um right now you know yes i am looking for a bounce from this area but uh i i you know that that bounce probably can be sold into uh, whether it gets all the way up to you know 1700 maybe 1750 it's kind of irrelevant gonna follow whatever the rest of the market tells essentially uh, let's go check out uh, gbdc sorry i forgot to check out this one and uh, gbdc actually wow uh, GBC closing above these moving averages right over here. GBC is making, um, GBC is getting above the area that it broke down from in November. So hold on. Do we have something new going on now? Because this would be akin to Bitcoin getting back above 6,000. If GBC was following Bitcoin, or sorry, if GBC was following Bitcoin, then it would be back around this range right over here, well below that territory. Uh, right now, as you can see, we actually closed above the purple 200 exponential and 200 simple, which is very, very powerful. And there's really nothing stopping this baby from three from the 377. So I guess we're, I, does this go back into a question if GBC is leading or not? Um, I'd still, I would hold off until we actually see spot move with it. But if spot does break uh, 5300 hey there's your signal right there man uh, moving up to 50 56 maybe even 57 um let's go check out zcash uh zcash put in a high as well bearish divergence so uh, looks like it wants to come back down to this uh, 64 dollar level uh bcash the real zcash uh, putting in a high as well put in some bearish divergence on the top daily stokes down as well be looking for a move down to uh, 269 and then 250 uh, Tron Cash uh, hit our target yesterday of 32. What is it? What was it? 32 cents? Or sorry, 3.2 cents, not 32 cents. Uh, this one looking a little bit more resilient. It kind of looks like it wants to rally off this area and give another test in the, in, into the prior high. I think that we probably do get that. I think that we probably do get that. But uh, ultimately, I do think that that test gets rejected. Um, let's go over to a weekly. Yeah, weekly is right at the 50. I mean, this this is too young to really judge it. Yeah, it's too it's too young to really judge it, but uh, you can see you can see in the initial etchings of a formation going on right now. We actually do have. Mm, no, I, w I won't say just yet, but we but we actually could have we actually could have a nice accumulation formation going on down here. Um, would would hinge upon the fact that it breaks above thirty you know three point two two cents. If it can break above that area, uh, this baby can this baby can run a lot more. A um, little bit above four cents to where I'd look towards next. However, uh, Neo Cash put in a high as well. We called a high on this yesterday, and coming down to our first support, our first twelve dollar area right over here. I do think that this one wants to come down a little bit long, a little bit more though. Uh, anywhere around eleven and a quarter, eleven and a half is where I'd be looking for this one to uh, to fulfill. Uh, right around the weekly two, the the weekly twenty one as well, eleven and a half actually. Uh, EOS Cash, um, powerful, uh, definitely one of the stronger ones actually. Uh, put in some bearish evidence on the daily as well right here. Uh, I would be looking for a retracement down to 511. Uh, if things get a little more crazy down here at around five, uh, 475. The thing is, is that uh, this thing can retrace a lot and, um, and and still, you know, it has a lot of lot, has a lot of uh, supports built built uh, lower, built. I was gonna say overhead, but no, it's 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 underhead, un <laughs> under toe. But it doesn't make any sense. No, my point is that, you know, this thing can retrace and still, you know, it doesn't really destroy the formation. It's completely fine. Um, it's got a lot of work to do. So, you know, if it, if it did come all the way back down to 473, I, I'd probably think that that's a buy. Um, let's go check out Ripple Me Nipple Cash. And, huh, yeah, this one's kind of put in a high now as well. Uh, bearish divergence on the daily confirmed. Daily stokes technically down, but weak. Let's look at the weekly. Yeah, I do think that this is probably going to end up being a buy, though. It has tested weekly support. The The reaction has been lackluster, though. I don't like the reaction. It's it's it's, it's not very inspiring. Um, if this thing came back down to 33.5 cents, I think I'd be a little more comfortable with that. But um, 
do not want to see this weekly close below 34 and a half cent. That's the big thing for this one. I would be, I'd be a little bit more, I'd, I'd be a little bit more hesitant to talk about lower time frames on this one. I'd, I'd rather talk about higher time frames just because I think it's, a, it's a lot more clear there. Uh, does do you not want to see 34 and a half cent broken on a weekly total time frame? Uh, Monero Cash. What do we got over here? Yeah, same thing. Um, if this thing retraced all the way back down to 64 and a half bucks, that'd look nice. Um, putting it looks like it's putting in a high right here, grinding the 200 exponential. Yeah, if it came back to you know anywhere 64 and a half, maybe even 62, uh, that'd probably be a buy to me. Daily stokes are up though. A little bit of bearish divergence it looks like. Um, yeah, tough one. Tough one. It is it, it is certainly stronger overall. Um, the question is how far do we retrace? 60 sorry 65 or 60. Three or 62 and a half, you know, anywhere in that range uh, looks fine to me. Uh, again, gonna do, gonna do what the rest of the market does is what it comes down to. Uh, Stellar Cash, um, 12 and a half cents, yes. And that is a, still above our critical horizontal right here. Overall, Stellar, I just want to see maintain this area. Uh, let's go on over here, draw this trend line out, and explain this one more time. But basically, basically, Stellar put in a very important trend line throughout the whole of 2018 right over here, which it broke at the end of 2018 when Bitcoin broke 6,000. We have come back and retested this trend line right here. Do it well, depends how you kind of draw it. Do you draw it like this and we broke it the other day? Uh, did, we, did we just get a throw over on this trend line? We might have gotten a throw over on this trend line actually. Uh, very low volume break on this trend line, extremely low volume break, and straight back down the next day. Uh, that's that's That actually is kind of a throw over now, isn't it? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be careful with this one, the more that I think about it. Could just as easily draw this trend line, which is, you know, a year away right over here. You know, that's that's a problem with diagonals and why I don't typically like to use them. We do see a horizontal right over here, which is important. Um, regardless of that fact, I would be looking for a pullback either which way. Um, ooh, the weekly is already pulled back on a support, though. All right. So here, here's the thing. I do not want to see Stellar break, um, what is it, 12 cents? Uh, a little under 12 cents. It, I don't want to see it break that area. If it breaks that area, then I start to get more apprehensive with it. But for now, I would give it the benefit of the doubt, although there certainly are competing narratives with this. We do see a nice uh, rise in wedge formation and being put in place as well. Volume signature wouldn't necessarily be right, but uh, but it is also, you know, always of concern because these horizontal, because these, because these supporting reasons are being respected more importantly. So I'd go with it until, you know, until told otherwise. But for now, uh, it does seem to be working. More importantly, um, either which way that you look at it, this uh, this eleven point seven area is so critical. If that area gets broken, then this probably comes back down to revisit prior lows, you know, in the nine cent region. Um, as long as this holds up, though, I would be looking for this to likely get another try higher. I know that that's not too helpful. It's basically saying, hey, if we don't go lower, we're going to go higher. Yes, I get that, but uh, this weekly needs needs to bounce it pretty much now is is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, let's see. Okay, we spoke about Mrs. Litecoin. Let's go check out traditional markets for a second. We got spies right over here. Spy making a new high for the week. Holy fucking moly. And do you believe that this one, you know, we're still grinding this resistance right here. We do have a nice gap lower. So here's the thing, man. I am, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not bearish on anything that looks like this, but I would be kind of looking for a little bit of a pullback relatively soon. And whenever it gets anywhere around this range, around the 283-ish range, that's where we'll be looking to be a buyer most likely. Uh, oscillators are, are, are switching back over to trending to the upside. So do we? The question is, do we have enough enough juice to break this trend line and formally test our next resistance area at around uh, 290 and a half, 292? Uh, possible, very possible. Um, look, all the higher time frames are bearish. I would still be looking for continuations on these, um, but uh, but lower time frames suggest that we could have a pullback very easily to to, to retest about 283, and that's probably going to be bought up. So that's kind of what I'd be looking at right over there. What happens first though? Do we get continuation or come back down? Uh, I'd say that we probably we we probably actually come back down first. Um, but hey, I'm you know he, uh, here's the thing. That's an opinion. Don't trade my opinion. I don't trade my fucking opinion. What I can say about technical analysis: if you see an up open today, then we'll probably well, then we'll probably see 290 and a half before be, before we see the 283 ish level. If we see a if we see a down open today, then we will come back down and very likely fill that 283 level um, sometime today or tomorrow or, or something like that. And that's probably gonna be bought up, and then we get another try higher. Um, anyways, okay, cool. So we spoke all about that. Let's go check out. Um, let's go check out some forexes right now. Let's actually go check out my baby. Um, uh, GBP, uh, JPY. And what's GBP, JPY doing right now? Just a massive consolidation in this area right here, as you can see. Uh, nothing too crazy. I mean, the, no, you know, uh, don't need any sort of a crazy technical analysis going on right now. But overall, we're right in the middle of this triangle from a daily total perspective. Yes, daily stokes are up, so I would be looking for perhaps a test higher. Um, but 
hold on. I think I take that back. No, we are kind of, we are coming out of pressure on the lower time frames. Um, yeah, this this one's being this one's also quite difficult right now. This is why I trade the lower time frames. But yeah, okay. As far as the weekly goes, we could very easily pop back up, test the top of this triangle. That would look right on a daily, and then I'd look for that to probably be rejected. That would be somewhere right around here at around 146 and a half. Uh, if 146 and a half gets rejected, then you know it's it's just another one of those games where we just test resistance. So now I'm likely to go test some supports, um, just like we did right over here. Test some supports, then we go test some resistances, test some some supports. We've got picked up on the 200 exponential. I'd imagine that this this probably does provide a base to rally off of um, but higher time frames are bearish to be very clear this is what makes it difficult the weekly and the monthly are very bearish uh, very 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 ugly so uh, I shouldn't say very bearish but they're 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 certainly not nice um, you just you never know when news might hit this thing because you know you got you got to deal with Brexit and all that bullshit uh, but overall you know that's kind of what I'd be aware of right now uh, as far as the four hour goes getting rejected right here four hour looks like it actually wants to trend down a little bit yeah so I'm just uh, yeah hourly wants to come down as well so if you're in the very low time frames it would be looking for a move lower perhaps retest the 145 low 145 range um, right over there let's go check out one more let's go look at uh, the yen versus the dollar curious what this guy looks like yeah yen versus dollar is, is very interesting actually very interesting let's let's do this on a weekly let's do this on a weekly um, we did break this trend line here but as you can see with all diagonals they are annoying as fuck and they just get redrawn like this what's going on over here there's what's some guy in our window. there's some guy in a window what's going on he just oh it's some guys cleaning our window right now <laughs> uh elsa just got scared scared shitless right over there uh basically just forming out another triangle but you do see that us kind of getting walked down right here you know broke this area still respects it gets rejected right over here and then we just walk it down so i'd imagine this you know this this slowly but surely just kind of fills this area out <clears throat> i would be looking for a test on this trend line at some point and be looking to be a seller on this trend line overall i don't have a strong opinion on direction on this one technically speaking this is a symmetrical triangle which is an equal opportunity formation and whichever way that we actually break this is going to be the next big direction if we break it to the upside we'll be looking for a move yeah li likely here over to our next resistance at uh, 0 0.011 if we break it to the downside uh bad real fucking bad all the way down here at 0 0.0 not uh, 72 area so keep that in mind uh overall you know if, if, if i'm trading this one on the higher time frames that's what i'm that's what i'm paying respect to if i'm trading on the lower time frames i do think that this one wants to play out a little bit of up right here right now uh pop, probably pop back up and test not point not not uh eight nine we'll call it almost almost not point not not nine if i'm trading really low time frames but of course when we're talking about a monthly we're talking about you know fucking mo months out you know this, this could be a long fucking time for this to actually break uh it does to me look like it has it, it does to me look like this is actually a more uh probably a more bullish consolidation than anything um but again i don't have a strong opinion on this i i, I really do not so that's probably going to do it for uh for for all of that let's go back on a mr crypto let's go back on a mr bitcoin see what we got going on right over here go back to the four hour and of course, Bitcoin's still just chugging its way along. We got 32 minutes and uh, one second left on this four hour dildo, which very likely to end back above this trend line right here. So that tells me that, yeah, we're probably gonna ground this area out, maybe get another test to 5250, 5300. And then I'll look for that to create a little bit more divergence and then come back down, fill the gap somewhere around 50, 50 ish area as according to CMEs right over here. Does it need to happen like that? No, of course not. Here's the thing. How do you know, how do you know if that's going to be wrong or how do how would I know if that's going to be wrong? If Bitcoin breaks up to the upside at, um, if we break above anywhere above 5300 essentially and close like a two hour dildo above there, I'm looking for a move much higher. Um, well, much higher. Is a, is a is a is is a relative thing right but you know so, somewhere around this block between 55 50 and 5600 so keep that in mind um but for now i would say that there is a little bit more pressure onto the downside than not uh and looking at the bmbs and the litecoins of the world it does make me think that um we could you know if if, if they led it to the upside they probably lead it to the downside anyways um overall you know to, to wrap it up short-term time frames um, short term time frames looking for a very, you know, another grind at this top, probably come back down. Medium term time frames are looking for whatever dip that we have to be bought back up, whether it's 50 uh, 50, whether it's 4,900, whether it's 4,800, whatever, whatever it kind of gets down and, and dirty into. I'd say 4,900 is most likely over time. Um, look for that to get bought back up. Then we probably get another try higher. And then, you know, that, and then the market plays itself out and we get revealed whether we want to actually make a legitimate run higher or if this is going to be the top of the rally in confluence with all the major exponentials kind of looming overhead plus the MB 
Bobby Tietze, no plus the fear and greed, plus the, we didn't even, we didn't even look at the longs and the shorts, but we do have a great imbalance between both the sides right now. 26 and a half thousand open longs versus 18, 18,000 open shorts, uh, grossly imbalanced, but this has not been a great indicator for the past uh, couple months. The trend, the trend has been broken. We haven't really formed a new trend. So it's, there's not really anything to say on top of that. But hey, I suppose it is worth mentioning. So all these things coming together with each other, this is what makes this, this sort of an area a very cautious area. And that's really the message that I want to have as long as we're around this area with, with the way that everything's kind of currently situated. Because I know a lot of people are feeling that FOMO drug, thinking that they missed the bottom, thinking that Bitcoin's never going to go lower. But keep in mind, um, when talking about the higher time frames for Bitcoin, back on over here uh and sorry even going to a weekly keep in mind that uh even once the low is found it's very likely that bitcoin does go sideways for a while um you know and, and even if the lows and even if the lows were in which i'm not saying that they are but uh but even if they were in it is likely that bitcoin you know pops back down and retests lower as well uh whether it's the four thousand level whether it's a 200 simple moon average uh you know overall the malaise is the same and here's the thing is that uh, whether you whether your whether your opinion is bearish or not, or or whether your opinion is 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 the lows are in or not, the way to trade it is the same. And this is what I always want to get out. This is why I don't trade my opinion. As far as technical analysis goes, I don't look for lower lows to actually trade towards until Bitcoin breaks the 200 cent moon average on the weekly, which is all the way at about 3,500. So it's got a lot of work to do and it's, and it's climbing up over time. And in fact, right now I'm long, you know, and I've been long for the last couple of weeks. So. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's basically it for right now. Uh, not too much has changed in the overnight hours, just Bitcoin kind of grinding this area out a little bit more. Uh, people will call this an ascending triangle, I'm sure. But either way, all I care about is support and resistance. Support, more preliminarily speaking, 5,200 resistance, 5,300. There you go. It's that simple. <laughs> all right, that's going to do it for today. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Look forward to see you there and do want to be wishing you well. So take care and see you soon.